everybody. Um, hope everybody's having a good day. The weather, at least here in Crawfordsville, is gorgeous. It is sunny, clear skies, a little bit of puppy clouds here and there, and um, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, which is uh, quite nice. So, um, yeah, it's it's really nice. Um, okay, anyway, um, let's uh, let's get to scratch. And kind of what I want to do today is uh, answer questions if you guys have any. Um, also talk a little bit more about the design document thing um, and uh, kind of recap some of the stuff that we had done with uh, with our uh, video game sample video game that we were making uh, so let me go ahead and load that so uh, let me first off just see if we have uh, if there are any questions that um, I can go ahead and get off um, um, get taken care of off the bat here. Um, I did have a question a minute ago about the CS major and minor, um, and, um, if anybody has, uh, questions about what courses to take for CS, um, basically if you're interested in continuing with computer science, then in the fall you need to take, um, uh, I would advise CS 111, which is sort of the next course after this one, um, and possibly also Math 108. Um, Math 108 is required for the major and for the minor, uh, and the sooner you take it, the more um, options you'll have in terms of your electives and stuff later on. Uh, so that that would be uh, my suggestion. Um, Okay, yeah, uh, you can, if you're thinking of doing a math major or a math minor also, then, um, then you can either do Math 108 or Math 219, which is combinatorics. Um, and uh, so if, if anybody's thinking math major, math minor, uh, I would do Math 219 instead, uh, because Math 108 doesn't count for the, for the major or minor. Um, the... Um, Okay, so Reese Math 108 is uh, discrete math, intro to discrete structures, um, and uh, combinatorics is uh, has a lot of overlap with discrete math, but uh, but also not. Uh, so Reese, yeah, there is some symbolic logic, a um, few other things. Uh, if anybody wants to, to kind of talk about the details as to what uh, what you might take next semester, um, math or computing wise, uh, then then hit me up. Uh, Reese, I have some other suggestions for you probably. So um, yeah. Um, okay. So uh, the other thing about um, uh, the programming course. So for the first time in the fall, it will be taught in Python rather than Java. Uh, so we're transitioning the uh, the um, uh, curriculum to Java. If anybody was thinking about uh, taking uh, maybe like a CS 111 equivalent course over the summer, um, then uh, talk with me about that, and also talk with Dr. Um, uh, Westfall, since he's the department chair, um, and um, uh, because there's some details there that we want to make sure that are are uh, are Gucci. Um, okay, so any other courses or courses? Any other questions about like uh, since we're in kind of registration period about what uh, what you guys might do next? Um, and then, if not, we'll go on to questions on questions and more discussion on Scratch. Um, um, okay, don't see anything in the that chat. Let me check um, Discord. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, so. Um, Let's, uh, let's start by um, uh, kind of doing an overview of 
sort of the the structure of our scratch project and um, uh, so what we had was we had um, the silly animation to start and then our trick with the fade out was to have the solid object fade in that was uh, not the only way to do it but it's a trick uh, and that's a trick that you can use in uh, you can use in multiple situations. Um, then we had our cat flying and um, our rocket ships uh, creating clones. Uh, we've got these uh, these five sprites that were uh, basically to do with like you know press space to start the title and so on. Uh, the lightning bolt that the uh, cat fires, the robot, and with the robot, uh, we, we had not done this with any of the other sprites. Um, with the robot, uh, I decided to uh, define a custom function. And um, you can find those custom functions inside the, uh, the sort of my blocks, this pinkish one. Um, I didn't have to do this, but it made uh, this part of the code uh, by defining this function, it meant that this part of the code uh, was a little bit more tidy. Um, and I could have certainly defined other functions. So for example, uh, this, in fact, why don't we just go ahead and do one. Uh, let's take this uh, if touching lightning stuff. Um, so let's say, um, Um, boss hit. So if the boss get hit, hit, gets hit by lightning, then we should do all of these things. And then we can just put that there. And that simplifies this little chunk of code quite considerably. Um, so uh, you can define functions kind of from the get-go like we did um, with the boss shooting stuff or kind of after the fact to condense um, this chunk of code into a single item. Um, we could have also put the if loop inside there. Um, it didn't really matter. Um, yeah. Uh, now, what I wanted to talk about a little bit with respect to the functions is, uh, so notice that, that now we've defined two functions for the boss. We've divided or defined boss hit, which has no inputs, uh, and we've defined boss shoot pattern, which has two inputs. And if you want to use the input, then you just click and drag um, the thing, and then whatever the input number of shots is will replace that number, and similarly for the delay. Um, but, uh, okay, so. The um, uh, the thing about the functions, though, is that they are local to the sprite. So, for example, if I come over here to the cat and I go to the my blocks, you'll notice that those don't appear up here um, because those functions only that we wrote were defined only for the boss. So, if you want to use a similar function. Uh, or uh, something like that with the uh, with other sprites, you have to do those on a per sprite basis, um, and uh, so you can't have sort of a generic function that works for multiple sprites. What you have to do is basically make copies of it for each sprite. Um, okay, so um, any questions on the um, the function part of um, uh, scratch here that's defining your own custom function, the pink my blocks. Okay, um, 
no questions on the functions. Um, okay. Um, all right. So one thing I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about too is um, one thing that I like about Scratch is the fact that you have code write, written per sprite and everything is done on a per sprite basis. So what that means is that this is really kind of an object-oriented language. Uh, one thing I don't like about Scratch, however, is the fact that it, um, it kind of makes you think that um, everything is running simultaneously. So for example, here, when I receive boss level, then this piece of code is going to work or run and this piece of code also is going to run. And the way that visually things look here, it looks like they're running simultaneously. And they kind of are, but uh, on a computer, basically nothing ever runs simultaneously. Um, things are running sequentially. And the magic of Scratch is that under the hood, the developers have made it so that you don't have to think about that. But um, what it means is that occasionally things will kind of go haywire. Um, this, for example, was why I, um, on the lightning, uh, put in these very slight delays. Um, because sometimes what can happen is the if I didn't have these little delays uh, before the lightning disappeared is that the lightning could touch the robot and then the lightning says oh I'm touching the robot I should delete myself and it deletes itself and that happens so quickly that the robot doesn't ever check to see if it was touching the lightning and hence whether or not it should uh, have health deducted, okay? So one other thing we could do to kind of fix that other than having the delay here is, so let's look at the rocket ship or the lightning. Right here, we had the, uh, the lightning, um, or sorry, the rocket ship, if it touched the lightning, then it would change the score by one and then delete itself we could have moved the score over to the lightning rather than here on the rocket ship, but fundamentally we still have to have, um, we still have to have this little block for both um, parts of the code, or bo on both sprites, because we need the rocket ship to delete itself, and there's no way for the lightning to tell the rocket ship to delete. Um, so that's why we had to, um, that's why we had to do um, the, um, yeah, uh, that's why we had to have this if block uh, in both pieces of the code. And the delays are there to basically make sure that neither sprite gets deleted before it realizes that it's touching the other one. And uh, that just is kind of a, a thing to um, make sure that we don't um, have kind of weirdo bugs. Um, okay, so uh, any other questions over how we did all of this stuff on... Um, um, in our uh, development. Um, this, right now, what we have is what I would consider to be a minimum viable product. Um, and if we wanted to extend this, then I would be thinking about like making extra levels or power-ups or multiple bosses or something like that. Um, okay, so any, any questions on um, what we have thus far?
take a sip of my Coke while you guys are doing it. Uh, hmm. Okay, Jimmy. Um, so, um, uh, did I say we were going to actually add in a power-up or just that we could? I don't remember. I mean, I, I can, I guess. Um, well, all right, so let's just do that. Um, let's add in a power-up. Uh, so the first thing we need to decide is what do we want our power up to do, and um, maybe one thing we could do is let me choose a sprite and see what we've got to work with for power ups, um, or work with this art. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and add one in. It's not that bad. Um, here, why don't we do this? Why don't we make it so that um, there's a, a heart that will randomly appear and uh, the cat can touch the heart to get uh, life points back. Okay. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's um, first thing, let's uh, shrink this by a little bit because that's uh, a bit too big. Uh, that's probably good. And uh, let's see what costumes it has. Okay, just one costume. Um, that's maybe a little too big still, too. All right, we'll try that. Okay. Um, so when the uh, game starts, then uh, it should hide. Now, I'm going to come over to the cat, and I'm going to make a, uh, a couple of tweaks here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to delete that part. And then um, the cat currently can only move up and down. So uh, I'm going to make it so that the cat can also move left and right. Uh, so under variables we have the variable we call cat y position. Um, we also need to make the variable cat x position. Okay. And then um, when we, if we press uh, right, we should change not y, but rather x. Okay, so let me get a change x uh, in from here. Change x by 5 and then change the cat x position by 5 and then uh, let's duplicate that and do the same thing uh, if we hit the left arrow key. Okay, so now we need to put those um, there so that we're checking whether or not the arrow keys are pressed up, down, left, and right, um, and then move the cat accordingly. Uh, now, the other thing we need to do is um, on our lightning, um, the lightning, the X coordinate, we made always be negative 90. So we need to change that to be cat x position, and that way the um, uh, the lightning bolt will. Um, so let's um, that way the lightning bolt will uh, correctly. Um, okay, it didn't look like it was correct there. And it's because um, I need to restart uh, that. Okay. Um, oh, the other thing we should do is we should set the uh, X to minus 180, I think is what we had it, and set... Uh, under the variable, and this is why the lightning didn't look correct, uh, we need to set the cat's x position to uh, minus 180. Um, okay. 
Uh, so that uh, that will put the cat back where it belongs at the start of the game. And uh, then if I move the cat, uh, the, um, um, the lightning bolt correctly starts where the cat is, uh, both in the X and the Y direction. Okay, so um, shoot the heart. Um, yeah, we could do that. We could just say... You just have to shoot the heart rather than touching it. Um, either way, I mean, that's a game design decision uh, as to how exactly you want to build it. Um, and, um, you know, sort of what uh, what your, your goal is. So on the heart face, what I'm going to do is let's make it so that the heart only appears when um, the... Um, when the boss level is going on. And so let's, um, let's do this. Uh, let's make a forever loop. Um, and let's wait a random amount of time. Actually here, let's just, uh, let's just do this once. Let's say wait five seconds. And uh, then after five seconds, Let's um, um, go to a random position and uh, show, and then um, um, oh, I've got a good idea. Uh, let's go to a random position and show, and then uh, if so we're going to need a loop after all. Um, if it is touching the uh, the cat, then we'll add in a very short delay, and uh, then we'll uh, hide it. Okay. And then on the cat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, actually, we could do this just on the uh, the heart. We don't need to do it there. Uh, we could make it so that the, um, so actually, we don't need this delay because the cat isn't going to have it. Uh, then we could change the cat health by, say, five. Okay. Uh, Right now, we have our cat health set at 1,000 just to make it impossible for us to die um, uh, for testing purposes. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, what will happen is when we receive boss level, it will wait five seconds, go to a random position, and then sit there basically waiting to get touched. Um and so what we could do is then uh, if we touch it, uh, which I can't do because we're not running the game now, then it will change the cat health by five, and then it will hide itself. Okay, um, that's it. So let's uh, run it and see how it goes. All right, so I made it so that there was only one little rocket ship for testing purposes. All right, so there's the boss. And there's the heart. Oh, I'm sorry. I had already... When I clicked this, it started running, and it can't run twice. So, okay, that's my bad. There it is. And it looked like our, our health went up. Uh-oh.
Uh oh, looks like we got a little bit of a bug here too. Uh, which is since we made the cat be able to move. Um, um, if the uh, stars hit the top or bottom part of the screen, um, then uh, we've got a little bit of a problem there. So, um, okay. So then on the star, um, yeah, so then this thing right here, we say if the X position is less than minus 245, delete the clone. We would need to add something like that for the Y position. So if the Y position is um, less than, let's say, um, where is the boss right now? 95. Um, if the Y position is, say, less than negative 180 or um, greater than 180, then we need to delete um, actually I'll just do it this way. Then delete this clone. Okay, so um, so this is sort of the, the thing about the design, right, is that we decided, okay, we're going to add this power up, um, but as we do so, we have to continually change the uh, code for other things because you're going to notice unintended consequences. So, for example, when the cat could only move up and down along the left of the screen, the stars would basically never hit the bottom or the top before they hit the left-hand edge. And um, so we had to add in code to basically take that into account. And um, let's, uh, let's see how it works. Okay, so let me get the... Alright, that looks like it works. And the cat health works. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so it looks like uh, looks like that kind of works. Uh, adding the heart in, and there's a lot of other things you could do. Um, you could make it so that the heart waits five seconds, and then uh, if it doesn't get picked up. So like, think about um, uh, games like Mario or something where there's a power up, and if you don't get the power up within a few seconds, it starts to flash, and then it disappears if you don't pick it up. Uh, you could do that or something like that by using uh, the timer and the timer trick that we uh, did with our COVID-19 project. So, uh, so let me actually go back to, to that. So just to remind you, um, oops, I didn't want to run it. Um, uh, in our COVID-19 project, we had uh, the timer trick, which was we had the timer for the entire program, but then we also uh, said that each individual object could get a time that uh, it was infected, and we could compare that to the timer to see how long it's been infected. Um, that we used to say that basically after some amount of time, then the um, uh, the things recover or die. Um, and um, right. So that um, that trick with the timer and having the timer variable along with sort of a, a, a secondary timer, uh, we could have used with the power up to make it so that like, after a few seconds, it would start flashing, and after maybe a few more seconds, it would disappear if you didn't pick it up. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so let me, uh, let me actually just go back to the Scratch main page. And um, if you guys on, um, uh, I'm kind of curious roughly as to what, uh, 
what kinds of games people are thinking. So if you guys could type in the uh, the Twitch chat, um, uh, the the stream chat, just kind of what type of game roughly you're thinking about. You don't have to go into a whole bunch of details, so just a couple of words uh, as to what kind of game uh, you're thinking. And I just want to see kind of what the range of things are. Um, yeah, so please uh, type a vu. All right, top-down arcade shooter. A brick game. <laughs> Jimmy. Um, yeah, all right. Well, if you're going to do a space shooter or something that's kind of like, uh, like what I did in my example, you're going to have to do something quite a bit different slash more complicated, uh, more fancy than my example. Um, so, yeah, I don't want you guys just remaking my game. Um, so, Jimmy, if you want to do a space shooter, that's fine, but uh, maybe talk to me about um, how to do um, uh, some specifics. Uh, germ fighter game, okay. Couldn't imagine why we uh, would be imagining that. Uh, Dodge the obstacles. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's a good. So kind of like Flappy Bird uh, is sort of a popular uh, type thing, um, or uh, things like that. Um, let's go to Explore and let's look for games. Um, you're gonna find in here a whole bunch of different uh, things um, that. Um, 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 yeah, so like, for example, here's a Mario game. Um, so let's, let's look inside this. And it will take forever to load, of course. Okay. Um, there are lots of sprites in there. Okay. Um, and lots of backdrops. All right, so let's play it and see what uh, see how it works. Okay, so they've got a little animation. Okay, so that's pretty cool how they got the typing to go. Pretty cool. All right, let's see how this works. So, I have to admit, this is really pretty cool. Okay, I suck. Um, and then we have to start all over, which sucks. Oh, and they've got locking set up, so you probably have to unlock each world based on how many coins you've got. That's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a pretty, uh, pretty expansive game. Um, um, yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's actually look how they did this text, uh, thing, because that's, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, um, 
didn't use text to speech. No, it's none of those. Let's see how the text box worked. Um, okay, so we've got the different color text boxes. Text engine. Ah, okay. So this is uh, this is pretty cool. Um, they basically programmed in um, a function that um, goes letter by letter and adds each letter by um, you know so the 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 text here would be literally it's going to type y and then y o and then y o u and then y o u space etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, one letter at a time until it reaches the end of the the text message uh, and then that's when it's done so that is actually really cool uh, how they did that um, so um, yeah the other thing that we could look at here is Mario um, and uh, it's got the rotation styles but then also uh, here's how they did the the movement okay so um, it's asking if the appropriate if the movement keys are pressed then move it uh, if the up arrow is pressed then jump um, and if it's doing a spin jump or not right so that this is pretty complicated obviously um, then um, um, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, but then at some point, it's going to define um, the, uh, here it is, define walk. So this, they've defined a function here. Um, and yeah, spin jump, star boy. Uh, I guess there, there must be the yellow stars in the game. Um, so yeah, so this is pretty uh, pretty expansive um, uh, code, uh, obviously, but this is a, a pretty pretty uh, um, uh, detailed game. Um, now the other thing I wanted to point out is that there's these sprites called hit sensors, and uh, this is one of the ways that you can do. Um, checking to see whether or not um, the uh, something is being touched by another thing. So for example, the Mario sprite um, is uh, this complicated shape, right? And so what a lot of games will do for simplicity is they'll put like a rectangle that is invisible, uh, but that sits exactly uh, with and follows Mario around, and then rather than checking or whether or not you are touching um, touching Mario, you check whether or not you're touching the little box that surrounds Mario, um, because it's a lot easier to do the math for that. Um, we didn't use that in our um, our space shooter, um, partly because it was relatively simple. I don't think we really needed to. Uh, but we certainly could have used a trick like that. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's go back and see uh, some other things that maybe will um, <clears throat> uh, kind of maybe inspire you guys on some stuff. Um, all right, we have to see what toilet paper hoarder is all about. Oh, that's right. We've already seen this. That was the cookie clicker kind of game. Um, and, um, yeah, there's going to be a whole bunch of, uh, oh, this looks interesting.
Okay, so they've kind of made like scratch within scratch. Okay, so this is not what I was expecting it to be. Alright, so kind of a, another platformer. Uh, I thought it was going to be something different than that, but hey, whatever. Um... Yes, so a town that is that is what a hitbox is, um, and uh, some of you guys probably hate their existence because you know if you play like Counter Strike or something like that, then and you're like, how the hell did that guy shoot me? Well, they shot the hitbox, and yeah. Um, so all right, so let's uh, let's look at maybe uh, one more here, uh, just just quickly. Uh, so here's something sort of Minecraft in style. Let's see what that's all about. This is a pretty cool looking. Oh, check out the uh, lip sync, by the way. So they've got a sprite basically for the guy's mouth. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure where this is going. Yeah. All right, now I just need to get the last one here. Why are you floating? Come on, fall down. Okay, so that's all this was. It wasn't actually a game. It was just the animation. Um, but there were some pretty cool effects in there. So uh, maybe you guys learned uh, a few things of, of, or, you know, get inspired by a couple different tricks. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's go to Canvas real quick. Um, and make sure that we're all clear. It looks like seven of you have turned in the video game design document. Oops. Um to go to the assignment itself um, so please get that finished uh, today um, because um, what I want to do this weekend is I want to read over what you guys have submitted and uh, give you guys some feedback about um, your possible project so uh, so please it is vitally important that you get that done uh, tonight so that I can uh, give you feedback this weekend uh, and then you'll guys have, you'll have plenty of time to start doing programming uh, next week. 
Um, okay, so um, one other thing I should point out is, uh, let's look at the timeline here um, of when things are due. Uh, so on, we're basically done in class with Scratch. Um, and you guys will be working on your projects for the next couple of weeks, basically. And on Monday, we're going to start talking about uh, something rather different um, called um, basically machine code. And it's kind of nitty gritty. And we'll be looking in, in sort of great detail as to how uh, programs actually get executed on uh, processors. And um, there will be another project that goes with this to do um, basically write a program that does a relatively simple mathematical function. Um, and um, uh, so, and there will be some other sort of short assignments and short parts of the project to go with it. Uh, what this means, though, is that for the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll basically be doing two things at once. And I'll try to make it so that there's never anything, there's never two things due on the same day, um, just because I think that that's uh, nice. Um, but uh, just just be prepared that uh, we're going to be kind of working on multiple things simultaneously for the next couple of weeks. So anyway, um, all right. Well, if there are any questions, go ahead and uh, type them in the stream chat or on Discord. Um, if there aren't any questions, uh, then I'll, I'll kill the stream, and um, um, you guys can have a great weekend. Um, so I'll just sit here looking pretty, waiting for uh, any questions. You guys can check out my super messy uh, home office, because it is pretty messy. All right, um, doesn't look like there are any questions. So, all right, I'll go ahead and uh, end the stream here. You guys have a great weekend, and please, please, please get the uh, your design documents turned in uh, tonight so that I can look at them this weekend. See you guys later. Have a good weekend.